All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what will the Republicans do in answer to uh, Obama's executive order on amnesty? And I'm not just talking about blocking Obama's executive order. Uh, I'm talking about what will the Republicans put forward as uh, their own plan, if anything, uh, in advance of the 2016 uh, election uh, to give the uh, presidential candidates something to have, to hold on to, to put forth, uh, something to put in their platform as a plank. Um, joining us now is uh, former Congressman Tom Tim Credo, former Colorado Congressman, former presidential candidate, author of In Mortal Danger, The Battle for America's Border and Security. And, uh, of course, uh, he is one of the most uh, outspoken critics of uh, amnesty for illegals. Hello, Congressman. How are you today? Good. Good to talk to you. So what do you... What do you think is going to happen? What, what will the Republicans do from a, and again, I'm not diminishing what they need to do to, 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 to thwart what Obama did, but I mean, if they do that or if they don't succeed in doing that, what are they going to put forth as their, forward as their own plan? It's very scary because the only thing we know uh, so far, the only hint we've had so far is from Representative Jeff Sessions, who during a, a debate on uh, several bills on the House floor um, indicated that indeed, if everybody just would hold on, I think he was talking with Representative Gutierrez, um, who is, of course, a huge supporter of amnesty. And he was saying essentially this, and I'm paraphrasing. But he said, hold on. Don't worry about it. You know, when we get in charge, everything will be taken care of, and we'll be getting a bill together that you'll probably like. So believe me, that's a very scary thing to say. By all indications right now, and from everything I've been e able to read, it will be a bill that will indeed even expand amnesty. It will be something akin, perhaps, to what uh, Governor Romney has suggested that Republicans need to do, and that is to forget the battle against amnesty, give it its all over with, and go ahead and broaden, significantly broaden, President Obama's amnesty. What is it, and I've asked you this before, I think I've asked others this before, what is it that Republicans don't understand about uh, how, how amnesty and this whole nonsense, this whole issue of illegal immigration uh, is a lose-lose for them on so many levels? Yeah. I, believe me, it, it, it's difficult to uh, come to some con a rational conclusion about what, in fact, is motivating them. I know this. I am positive of this. My own experience testifies to it, that the leadership in the House, which has not changed since I was there, actually, uh, with one exception, um, is absolutely committed to amnesty and is committed to it uh, because, indeed, the Chamber of Commerce has been pushing them so hard on this issue. And, of course, all those business people throughout the country have been contributing uh, to a lot of Republicans in the hopes that they will get this amnesty. I was once, and this is an indicator uh, of just how bad things are in Congress. I was once called in, well, I was often called in by then uh, the uh, whip, Tom DeLay, who we used to call the hammer, um, to chastise me. I got called to the woodshed for criticizing the administration, criticizing the president, speaking out against other Republicans who were supporting amnesty. And, and he called me in one time and he said, you know, this is... This is the third time I've done this. He said, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you keep this up, and he got so intense, I always joke and say, you know, I wanted to pick up the phone, call my wife and say, hey, do they have the kids? Where are they? You know, because <laughs> the way he did it was just so, you know, I don't, you know, I've called you in how many times? And this tells you everything you need to know about Congress. He said to me, if you keep this up, you are going to ruin your career in this place. Now, that was the most horrifying thing he could think of to say to me. And I said, Tom, I don't know how to break this to you. Uh, I don't want a career in this place. I don't even like this place. And so after a while, they sort of left me alone. But that tells you what they think and what most members respond to, by the way, as being the most threatening thing that can be possibly put forward, their career in this place. And to them, it, th this whole amnesty thing has got to be taken care of. Get it off our plate. Get it the pig through the snake. Anyway, any metaphor you want to use, it's got to get done so that their careers can advance. And they couldn't give a damn about the rest of the country or, I mean, the future of the country. It's there. It's immediate. Well, How are we going to get elected the next time? 
Well, you know, Tom, it's funny because uh, Tom, Tom, Tom DeLay is a frequent guest on this show, so uh, it's, uh, that, uh, I'm chuckling at that story. By the way, I think it was Pat Buchanan who said that um, Boehner uh, appears to uh, be concerned with uh, who pays his room, board, and tuition. Uh, with regard to uh, to immigration, yeah. uh, listen, Congressman. Always great, to, always great to talk to you, sir. We'll we'll keep checking in with you along the way. Thank you very and, much. Have a merry Christmas. And Take you care. too, Congressman Tom Tim. Thank you, Tom Tim Cradle, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back with the national spokesman for the New Black Panther Nation. He's also leader of the New Black Panther Party in Texas, Minister Quanell X. And by the way, Cheryl Atkinson will be here next hour. I misspoke earlier. Anyway, uh, first before we go to Quanelex, let's turn now to Dr. Chauncey Crandall for some cholesterol tips, and who can't use those? Judging from everything you hear, you think all cholesterol is bad, but that's not really true. You need a certain amount of cholesterol to maintain good health. The problem is that too much cholesterol in your blood contributes to a plaque a fatty substance that narrows the coronary arteries that feed blood flow to your heart. Picture your coronary arteries as a four-lane highway. If one lane becomes blocked, traffic still flows well. Two lanes, no major problem. But if a third lane becomes blocked, that spells trouble. It's the same way with your coronary arteries. And when plaque slows their blood flow to your heart, this can even cause a heart attack. The good news is that when it comes to cholesterol, lifestyle changes can pay off big time. Even a small reduction in plaque can be like opening up another highway lane. Suddenly, blood flow that was stalled can go forward again. Changing your lifestyle does not have to be hard. And in fact, here are three ways to help you start lowering your cholesterol. Snack on nuts. Nuts are probably one of the easiest and tastiest ways to lower cholesterol. Walnuts and almonds are among the best. Bulk up your diet with fiber. Choose whole fruits instead of a fruit juice, brown rice instead of white, and if you're eating a baked potato, be sure to leave the skin on. Choose fish. Fish contains cholesterol-fighting omega-3 fatty acids. I'm Dr. Chauncey Crandall, and thanks for watching this Heart Health Minute. Remember, it's never too late to prevent or reverse heart disease. Right now, I invite you to discover your own risk for heart disease or even a heart attack by taking my quick, free online quiz at www.simpleheartest.com.